We are here with Nordic Semiconductor at Embedded World 2024, and this is an image that might seem familiar to you, because at the last Embedded World, we spoke to Robin about the Thingy53 doing machine learning, and we're doing exactly that again. But there are some key differences this time. I mean, if you'd like to see the original video, you'll find a link to that in the video description, also in the accompanying blog post. But we saw just how easy it is to train a model using the Thingy53 thingy and Edge Impulse. Um, but this is a much more real-world scenario. So what's the differences between this and the old project, and what are you going to show us today? Yeah, so last year we showed you how you can do uh, model data collection and model uh, building uh, and testing your model in Edge Impulse Studio using the Thingy53. Uh, this year we have uh, taken it a step further and we're actually showing an example application of predictive maintenance using the Thingy53. Uh, so what I've done or what we've done is that we have taken the Thingy53 and mounted it to the side of this table fan. Mm -hmm. And so the Thingy53 is here. It is connected to a relay that cuts power to the fan and it's using the internal accelerometer in the thingy to uh, detect the vibrations of the fan. So if I turn on the fan, the fan starts vibrate, vibrating slightly. Uh, but this is the normal operation for such a fan, so it continues going. If I stop the fan again manually and add a little weight uh, to one of the fan blades, this simulates a broken bearing, for example, in the fan, which would make the uh, impeller or the propeller on the fan uh, slightly unstable, which would cause it to shake a non-noticeable amount for a normal human being. Uh, but for our machine learning model, it means a fault uh, state is happening and it actually cuts power to the fan uh, based on uh, just the vibration that the thing is sensing. Absolutely, and, um, and and this is, funnily enough, something that we have talked about before. There are projects on Electromaker covering this. This entire topic is called predictive maintenance. And the, the beauty of this is that um, if you want to get into predictive maintenance, you need sensors, you need some kind of MCU that's going to be able to do all the number crunching and be able to train models. So there's a distinct advantage for using the Thingy53 for this, in that everything that's happening in this demo is happening in one box, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Uh, the Thingy53 contains all the sensors. It contains the main processing. Uh, uh, core that is running the fully trained model. Uh, the model is trained uh, in the cloud, but when it's running, it's only processing data locally. It also has an internal battery, it has a connector for uh, I2C, uh, this QIC interface that allows you to attach things as this relay. Uh, and we also have made it now simpler to integrate uh, with this uh, machine learning uh, platform online. Uh, so we have made our own version uh, that's called mlstudio.nordicsemi.com uh, where you can actually uh, interface with uh, Nordic products more easily than in the old Edge Simple Studio or the Edge Simple Studio. And is, is that quite new? Like, I think it's the first time I might be hearing about the, the, the Nordic side of it. Uh, we opened it for registrations uh, Monday this week, All so right, yes, okay. it's quite new. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and so I, I guess the, the next question would be, if uh, people want to get started with Thingy53 and with all the uh, new Nordic software side of things, where's the best place for them to find out about it? Uh, you can go to mlstudio.nordicsemi.com and create a, a create a user account there. And then you will get straight into the ML building platform. And links to documentation and all the compatible dev kits are there as well. Fantastic. Well, um, yeah, you uh, uh, you heard it here first. If you want to start working with ML and Nordic, there is a specific site that you can go to. And by the way, those links will be in the description of this video and the blog post. And uh, if you want to get started with any of Nordic stuff, the DevZone is also fantastic. As someone who is struggling with the basics of Zephyr right now, it's one of the most clear platforms for learning it. Robin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.